these postcards look real. But the cities do not. Millions of users prompt the same AI models and keep discovering places that never existed. Some call it a glitch in the data set. Others say we're glimpsing a reality next door to our own. I'm John Genoa. This is America's Strangest History. Tonight, we follow breadcrumbs inside the machine to chase cities that shouldn't exist on any map. On a quiet Monday night last April, a user named Pixel Screamer posted a simple complaint. Stable Diffusion 3 keeps giving me Strindale Station no matter what country I prompt. Within 12 hours, the post exploded past 11,000 upvotes. People everywhere tried their own prompts, and the same ghost city kept bleeding through. Variations on the spelling changed, but the vaulted glass roof and the Art Nouveau timetables stayed identical. TikTok pounced, hashtag phantom places rocketed to 43 million views in just five days. Creators raced to out weird each other, prompting Jack's Mouth Pier, Caller Falls, even New Yarmouth, a city Google Earth insists is open ocean. Weird, right? Mainstream techies scrambled to explain it. The Verge called it AI's Bermuda Triangle. BBC Tech settled on a fascinating training data hiccup, while Wired admitted, we tried, we can't reproduce these coordinates in reality. GeoSleuths dug into cadastral archives, Victorian gazetters, even 1950s railway charts. Nothing. Strindale on paper has never existed. Search traffic for these non-existent towns now rivals real-world tourist hubs. Go figure. So what exactly is breaking reality here? A secret data set? A mathematical mirage? Or the first postcard from somewhere else? Strange, but the deeper we dig, the stranger the explanation gets. If phantom cities feel unprecedented, remember the face that came first. Her name, at least online, was Loab. In 2022, a prompt engineer found that by negatively seeding the term Brando, the model spat out one woman over and over. Sunken cheeks, glassy stare, crimson blemishes. No matter how the user tried to escape her, Loab found a way back. Headlines dubbed her the first cryptid of latent space. Researchers called it a vector attractor, a deep pit in AI's memory the algorithm kept rolling into. Loab mattered for two reasons. First, she proved AI can hallucinate a consistent entity that never existed in its training data. Second, she showed those hallucinations can somehow jump across model generations from diffusion version 2 to 3 to mixed hybrids, kind of like folklore crossing centuries. If one spectral woman can haunt the latent space, why not a whole rail station or seaside town? The leap from Loab to Strindale is actually terrifyingly small. And if the algorithm accidentally builds people and places from pure noise, what else might it be cooking up for us? Let's test the legend for ourselves. No hidden data sets, no secret seeds, just the public stable Diffusion 3 release from April 2025. Prompt, old coastal resort town at golden hour, photorealistic, 35 millimeters. Sampler, seed. 10 seconds, there it is. Jack's mouth, spelled with a J, complete with a pier that never made a single tourist brochure before April of this year. Seven out of 10 generations echo the same ghost town. Change the seed, change the art style, the name clings like a watermark. Now, how about a different engine? Same textual prompt, different town, same pattern, an architecture too specific to be random, a name absent from every map on earth, what the heck is going on here? Two rival models trained on partly overlapping but proprietary corporations, yet they converge on non-existent locales with uncanny precision. Geo databases say zero. Latent space says otherwise. Researchers call these nodes phantom modes, gravity wells where the diffusion process collapses when it can't find a factual anchor. In other words, when the model gets confused, it invents a memory, then repeats it until somebody notices. 
But if phantom modes are just statistical ghosts, why do multiple modes share the same ghosts? And why do these ghosts come complete with signage, sports teams, even local weather reports embedded in the pixels? I hate to break it to you, but the answers get weirder from here. First stop, the 2024 Neural IPS Conference in Vancouver. MIT and Berkeley researchers unveiled a poster with a chilling subtitle, When the Lost Landscape Breaks Reality. Their finding? In very high dimensional models, the training loss forms cliffs and canyons. If the diffusion process slips off a data cliff, it free falls into a canyon of plausible but false images. Think of latent space as a foggy mountain range. The model is skiing downhill, but sometimes hits a whiteout. It guesses where the slope continues and invents terrain that never really existed. Oxford's team went further. They probed the gradients of stable diffusion 3 and discovered deterministic attractors, coordinates the sampler gravitates towards whenever a prompt includes ambiguous geography. Tech columnists point out a brutal truth. Large diffusion models are designed to hallucinate. That's how they bridge the gaps between countless visual styles. But none of these papers explain why separate companies with proprietary data sets hallucinate the same towns. Strange, right? Cross-model convergence really shouldn't be happening unless they share some kind of hidden ancestor or something else binds the attractors together. Three engines, three code bases, one ghost geography. And that leaves the door open for wilder theories. Because when science can't lock the door, folklore walks right in. When scientists hesitate, speculation accelerates. Online, four grand theories battle for dominance. Theory one, hidden training set leak. Maybe these towns are early access video game maps or defunct VR projects. Developers sign NDAs, data sets leak, and then AI spills the secret? Maybe, but evidence? A handful of texture files on GitHub references Calor Falls, but no studio claims ownership and the geometry doesn't really match our AI outputs. Theory two, the Mandela Echo. A collective false memory amplified by algorithmic bias. The more we see Strindale, the more our brains insist that it must have been real once. Theory three, the multiverse peak. Fringe physicist Dr. Ren Takashi argues that quantum sampling could project images from adjacent timelines. He calls phantom modes latents from next door reality. Mainstream academia rolls its eyes, but 200,000 TikTok users tagged his clip Hashtag proof. Theory four, the PSYOP Easter egg. Cybersecurity circles whisper that phantom places are canary tokens planted by data brokers to trace model lineage and detect leaks. No whistleblower has come forward, but experts note that the names share linguistic fingerprints like Old English suffixes plus Scandinavian consonant blends, exactly the style you'd pick to tag covert markers invisible to average users. A viral poll in June put the multiverse theory at the top. Science leans data artifact, society leans towards the cosmic. For now, evidence favors a statistical ghost, but until companies release every line of training code, the door to the stranger explanations can't be slammed shut. Not yet anyway. And out in the real world, that uncertainty already has consequences. Glitches don't stay digital. Search traffic for real towns with similar names, Strandale, Strathdale, spiked 400% this spring. Local tourism boards field calls from travelers asking for train schedules that don't exist. Airbnb hosts in Scotland report bookings from visitors convinced Strindale Station is like 10 minutes away. Spoiler alert, it isn't. Then came the Grifters. An anonymous NFT project sold citizenship tokens to Caller Falls, promising future airdrops of land deeds in a metaverse city. $2.1 million vanished when the contract owner cut and ran trademark lawyers hit a wall. If an AI invents a brand for a town that doesn't exist, who owns it? UK IPO spokesperson told Sky News in April that we can't register trademarks for non-entities. But AI blurs that test. 
people are already printing t-shirts. The grim reality is that bootleg merchandise moves faster than legislation. Meanwhile, risk assessment firms quietly warn the Fortune 500 clients that models that hallucinate phantom locations could taint critical maps, supply chain routing, even military targeting if they're left unchecked. The glitch is no longer a meme. It's a line item on cybersecurity budgets. With money lost and maps confused, pressure shifts to the companies behind the code. All three major generators claim proprietary protection, and none will publish their full training sets. Civil liberty groups aren't waiting, though. In May, the Electronic Frontier Foundation filed petitions mirroring FOIA demands, asking whether U.S. agencies have already used phantom-ridden models for public communications. Across the Atlantic, the new EU AI Act, effective January 1st, 2026 will mandate provenance watermarks on every synthetic image delivered to consumers. Brussels regulators have six months to define a standard, and phantom places are Exhibit A on their to-do list. Meanwhile, independent researchers launched Project Cartograph, an open-source effort to chart every phantom coordinate across all models. The map updates hourly, fed by volunteer GPUs worldwide. Transparency versus trade secrets, regulators versus innovation, and somewhere in that tug of war, the truth about Strindale Station is waiting, either hidden in CSV column or a place no crawler has ever been. Maybe Strindale Station is nothing more than math in the dark, a numerical hiccup that looks like architecture, literally. Or maybe it's a postcard slipped through the crack in reality, a crack our neural networks keep widening one prompt at a time. Until we map every corner of latent space, every prompt is a doorway, and some doorways open to places that were never meant to be found. So what's the takeaway from all this? Prompt responsibly. I'm John Genoa. This is America's Strangest History. Thanks for watching.